Hello everybody, it is me, Marina Martinez-Bateman. I am the CEO of New Coyote Consulting. We are an equity and communications firm here in the Pacific Northwest. And it is the Tuesday update. This is a slightly different view uh, of my office than you usually get. Um, there's my dog being super cute. I didn't wanna move. I just wanted to like start this video because I just got off the phone with my personal coach um, or my business coach. And we were talking a lot about like what New Coyote is for. Like what, what do we bring to the table? What are we here for? Because there's a lot of different communications firms out there, right? There's a lot of people working from an equity lens these days, uh, more and more, because it's more and more relevant. But what are we really, like what are we doing here? <laughs> is something that I'm asking and, uh, and, and what do I want to do here, right? This is my, this is my company. And I know, you know, if you've been watching along, uh, we've recently come back from a really hard start to the year. We're back on track. Um, we're maybe 3% off where we're supposed to be in terms of revenue and in terms of accomplishment. And I am more than confident that we're going to make that up and surpass it in the next you know, what, six, five, six months of the year. Like we've just got great things coming down the pipe. Um, I am, it's like, as soon as I'm not in peril, I'm like, okay, <laughs> I, that's part of being a business owner that I really love. And I think that we don't talk enough about because we tend to think only in the way that this is negative, but I love a challenge. Um, sometimes I joke that I'm only happy when it rains. Um, I like it when things are kind of difficult. I like trying my wit and my skill against a problem and against the world. And that's one of the things I get to do constantly, whether I like it or not, at New Coyote. But one of the things I really appreciate about New Coyote is that we don't have, we don't have shareholders, we don't have a board, we don't, you know, the executives are me and, and my employee. <laughs> We don't have a lot that's going to censor us, that's going to hold us back. We don't have a lot of situations where, I mean, and as increasingly now, right? Definitely now after that, the choices I had to make at the beginning of the year, we don't have clients that are going to get upset when I say things like capitalism is hurting the, the world. Capitalism is driving global warming. You know, we are, I don't have to censor myself when I say that we actually have a looming threat of fascism here in the US. And that uh, in a lot of ways, the rules, the things that we did before COVID and before Trump don't apply anymore. We have a situation where, you know, we live in an America where literal neo-Nazis are feeling super safe to roam the streets of major cities in our country. There was a fucking Nazi rally in Nashville a couple days ago. Like, the Proud Boys are always around in Portland. Um, they're a Nazi gang. Like, it is, it is no longer agree to disagree with people who are opposed to us politically. And my space in this world, as a person who is a radical, who has been a radical, who trialed, tried and very spectacularly failed to pretend that I wasn't a radical in order to keep employment in certain more conservative spots, what I bring to the table and what I can do in this environment is say what the fuck the truth is, right? That we do have this, this looming fascist threat that is, that's more real today than it's ever been, um, that's here in the US, that's not in some other country, right? Um, and also to say that as a, as a person of color, as a Mexican, as a queer person, as a non-binary person, as a disabled person, we've never known justice in this country. These two things can be the same, right? I can come from a long tradition and a long line of people who have never known justice in the US. And we can be sitting under the threat of fascism in a way that we've never experienced it before. These two things can be true at the same time. And I feel, I feel grateful that other people are seeing this. I feel grateful that someone like Donald Trump 
you know, something like the Proud Boys, like the Nazi rallies, that that is helping other people who consider themselves to be normal people to see the America that I have seen, that my parents have seen, that my grandparents have seen and experienced, right? Um, and know that, that now, now that we've been seeing this landscape for all of these years, it, I think, is very much our duty as radicals, as historical generational radicals. My grand, my great grandmother was a communist, right? Like atheist, communist <laughs> school teacher. Um, that legacy, and also my own activism, right, throughout my life, that legacy has to come to bear now. It is, I think, our duty not to bring people over to radicality, because if you're a radical, you're a radical, and if you're not, you're not, and there's no moral high ground. As long as you're speaking your truth and living your values, that's what matters, not where on the political spectrum you land. Um, and also, no one's value is white supremacy, right? That's an artificial construct that has been created by the super rich by the owning class to separate workers from one another. And it sucks if you've been tricked into thinking that that's like a legitimate worldview, um, but you're not my people, <laughs> I can't help you. But I think that when people are coming into radicality, when people are coming into a resistance, because we've been on this side for so long, because we've been working on resistance for so long, and doing the labor and showing up for the movement, New Coyote has not just an ability, not just an advantage, but a duty to be there for people who are needing to learn how to speak out, needing to learn how to disrupt the status quo, needing to understand that while being neutral may have been the safest option in the past when what you were neutral on wasn't life-changing, life-shattering, life-threatening shit. But now when we're neutral in terms of genocide, in terms of white supremacy, in terms of worker abuse, in terms of theft, wage theft, all of that kind of stuff, benefits theft, right? What we're doing is we're throwing absolute gasoline on a fire of fascism, on a fire of disenfranchising the only people who have the ability to fight back the middle class and on the fire of our own destruction right i've already been on on those places but more and more we have a lot of people who grew up safe in this country who are no longer safe anymore and who will not be safe in an environment where we let fascism run rampant right so those are the things I'm thinking about for New Coyote and for our growth and for our next steps and what we need to be doing and where we need to be showing up. Um, if you, I, I normally don't ask y'all for, for um, that much stuff except to share decolonizing management and stuff like that. If you have a product that you wish I made, please tell me what it is. Either text me or email me or call me or put it below. I really wanna know when you're in these situations where you know what the right thing is to do and leadership or those in power or whatever is clearly not making that decision, what is it you wish you needed? What is it, or what is it you needed that you wish you had? All right, tell me, tell me down below. Have a lunch, have a walk, have a weekend. Don't work for free. I will see you next week.